for me to speak. Uh, but I'm just going to uh, give a brief uh, talk on the use of amyloid donor grafts in liver transplantation, a process which is called domino or sequential liver transplantation. So the general shortage of uh, cadaveric organs for uh, transplantation has led to some very innovative techniques in uh, liver transplantation. Split liver transplantation is where the liver is divided into two and used for two patients, or living donor transplantation where part of the liver from a living donor is transplanted into another person. And dominal liver transplantation which involves using livers explanted from patients with amyloid disease or FAP. So it's a fascinating concept in which uh, a patient with FAP receives a liver from a deceased or a living donor to cure his amyloid disease and then the patient's explanted liver is reused in another patient requiring a liver transplantation. So you have two operations done on two patients by two teams of surgeons simultaneously. And this process of receiving and simultaneously donating a liver is what is called a domino or sequential liver transplantation. And the rationale, as Professor Hopkins just explained, is the FAP livers have normal structure and function apart from minor deposits of amyloid in the blood vessels and nerves. And the condition requires at least 30 years to develop symptoms in genetically affected individuals. So the recipients of this liver will at, need at least the same time to develop symptoms. So if you carefully select, say, elderly patients, then they would, you would hope that they will not develop symptomatic disease within their expected lifespan. The advantages are the patients uh, with FAP um, who are the main domino donors are transplanted at a relatively young age. So you have young and hemodynamically stable and fit patient without portal hypertension. What it means that the operation is relatively easy with low risk of complications. And the planned nature of domino transplant means that these livers can be harvested with minimal cold ischemia time. The cold ischemia time is the time interval between removing the liver from one patient and transplanting it into another patient. And this time, the cold ischemia time, is one of the most important determinants of outcomes in liver transplantation. So if the cold ischemia time is short, it translates to a better outcome. And there is always that hope that the domino liver recipients may never develop that disease because it takes decades to develop symptomatic disease. The disadvantages, of course, again, Professor Hawkins' last slide, there is that small risk of developing uh, disease in the recipient. So most centers do domino liver transplants and they have their own guidelines, but generally we would select patients who are older and patients with advanced liver disease and liver tumors or the more marginal transplant recipients who might otherwise not be offered the opportunity to benefit from liver transplantation. The domino transplant with an FAP donor was first done in Portugal in 1995 and since then more than a thousand domino transplants have been done all over the world and the uh, information is maintained in the domino liver transplant registry which is part of the FAP world transplant registry and all the information is available at this website which is an open access uh, uh, information website. The most uh, recent published results of uh, the DLTR database are really excellent. A one year survival of 80%, five-year survival of 65%, eight-year survival of 61%. So although the risk of developing symptomatic amyloid in the recipient is concerning, these excellent outcomes likely justify the risk. I'm just going to show you the results of the nine domino transplants uh, which have been done at the Royal Free Hospital between 2006 and 2012. These are the characteristics of the domino donors, the patients with FAP who received a transplant and then donated their liver. So nine patients, five of them uh, are at the Royal Free Hospital, two were from King's College Hospital in South London, 
as you can see, all were relatively young with a median age of 38 years, quite fit with median weight of 70 kilogram and a medium time on waiting list of 196 days, a little over six months. And these are the characteristics of the recipients. Uh, for some reason, there were more women than men who received the domino livers. Most of them are above 50 years of age, only one uh, was under 50, 43. Uh, with, so median age was 57 years, median weight of 61, different blood groups. All recipients had advanced liver cirrhosis. Most of them had developed liver cancers on the background of the liver cirrhosis. The medium time on waiting list was 33 pay a days. And this really is the most important slide which shows the outcomes in the domino liver recipients. So of the nine patients in six years, six are alive and doing very well with no evidence of recurrence of their original disease for which they needed a transplant. And none of those six have shown any signs of symptomatic amyloid disease so far. Three patients died, but from reasons other than <laughs> related to the graft. If you look at the post-operative recovery, it is really very good. This shows the days they spend in intensive care unit, a median stay on ITU of two days, a median stay in the hospital of 16 days, and a cold ischemic time, which is a very important determinant of just seven hours. So median uh, ischemic time was seven hours. The blood transfusion requirements were quite low, a uh, median requirement of two blood uh, transfusion units during the operation. M most, apart from one, none of them had any significant intraoperative events. This patient required reconstruction of his vena cava, which is the main vein behind the liver, which takes blood to the heart. And that's a technical consideration uh, in transplanting this liver. Post-operatively, one patient had bleeding, which is something any liver tra transplant patient can have. It's not related to the domino graft per se, and had to be taken back to theater for removing of the blood clots. Another patient they developed mild renal failure, which required hemofiltration for two days. Three patients had mild graft rejection, which was treated. The others didn't show any signs of graft rejection and the graft function, all of them had normal graft function. And for follow-up, the longest follow-up we have is of 60 months, which is five years. The three patients who died, the one, this was the first one in 2006, that was a little unfortunate. It was more related to his advanced <coughs> liver disease. He was very sick at the time of transplantation and didn't quite leave the hospital. He died of sepsis and renal failure. This patient was admitted after two years with the recurrence of his hepatitis C and sepsis. And this patient was readmitted after a year, or more than a, uh, close to a year, with uh, signs of sepsis and renal failure from which he died. So overall, very good results. So in general, domino liver transplants has excellent outcome. And in selected patients, it's a very valuable donor liver resource. Thank you.